Good day and welcome to EMTV. As you can see, we're not in our usual spot, which is in the studio in the Polak building. And although it's really good to be back in our own office in the Tinbergen building, we simply have to talk about the closure of Polak. How do cracks suddenly appear in floors of such a building? Well, my guest Rob Nijsen, he's a professor in civil engineering, he will probably know. But first, let us go to the international students from the International Institute of Social Studies. These international students first have to go into quarantine, but how do you get food then? Well, that has been taken care of. I'm preparing sandwiches for the students that are coming uh, this week to study here in ISS. I am preparing the boxes for the students that come in. They get a box full of groceries. So they, when, they can, when they start, they don't have to go to the supermarket, so they can be in quarantine. The, they come from Schiphol, they come from the airport, and they have to go straight into quarantine for at least five days. And some choose yeah, to, be, to do it 10 days. Yeah, we started last year when the Lockdown was very strict and uh, they don't have to go to the supermarket, so also they cannot uh, infect other people. So it was very handy, yeah, but also very important to do that. And then after that they get 10 days of breakfast and lunch in a bag around 11, 11.50. I didn't know how to start planning for what to eat, so I thought it was very, very mindful and lovely of them. So I really enjoyed it from the, you know, the get-go. Next to providing groceries and lunches, the ISS also has a pickup service for students. Go to our website to watch a vlog from a student who's gonna pick up a student from Schiphol. And now we have to talk about the talk of the town, the closure of Polak. Because now Polak is closed and also the biggest part of this building, the Tinbergen building, how can you find a study spot? Well, with that question, our reporters Misha and Charlotte went to the sea hall to ask our students. Why are you studying here? Uh, I usually study in Polak, but of course, uh, due to the current condition of the building, we had to find other places. Because like Polak is closed, it's kind of harder to find places right now, because everyone is just trying to go to other buildings and see if anything is open or if they have any spots. Was it hard finding a study place? Um, not really. It's more difficult to find like common study places where you can talk and discuss with, you, with your team about uh, you know, the work you're doing. Usually I would like to go to like Sanders, but Sanders is also sometimes really quiet so you can't have like group discussions. I think libraries, they should also like accommodate more people because a lot of us want to study in the library but then when we book the spots, there's just never spots available. In these buildings, because everyone is either coming out of the lecture hall or going in, so it's kind of hard to focus and, you know, have that long-term concentration. The question remains, what is wrong with the floors in Polak? Well, if somebody knows, it has to be our guest. His name is Rob Nijs and he's a professor in civil engineering at Delft. Rob, can you tell us what is wrong with the floors? There's a lot wrong, not only with this building, but with hundreds of building, buildings in the Netherlands. Uh, a kind of type of floor, a concrete type of floor, a prefabricated system with a layer of concrete uh, poured on top, which is in principle a good floor, but if you execute it in a bad way, as cheap as possible, eh, to put it mildly, you get problems. And this is bad? This is bad, yeah. It's even so bad that uh, in May 2017, a parking garage near the airport of uh, Eindhoven suddenly collapsed during construction, the railway was built. And the reason they analyzed was that the top floor was in the sun, the full sun, and then the top of the floor gets warm, and what gets warm has to expand. So the floor starts to bend like this, and it cracked immediately and fell down on the other floors and the building collapsed during construction. And this is a disaster, of course. Concrete is a peculiar material. It's very strong on pressure, like rock, yeah? basically it's, it, it's poured rock, but it cannot take up tensile forces yeah? which pull it apart. Yeah? Like if you bend something and the underside cracks will occur. And that's what happened now. And for that reason we put reinforcement steel bars in the floor. And that takes up the, these, these tensile forces. 
Yeah, so the combination of steel and concrete makes a safe floor. And what they did with this type of floor was leave away as much as possible of the reinforcement yeah, on certain spots. And that wasn't checked by the government uh, whether they did that. And the contractor thought, okay, I get a good price because I use less, uh, less concrete and there were other things which went wrong. And that is, is like uh, slowly uh, taking a piece of, uh, of, of meat, for instance, and you slice off a piece, a piece, a piece, a piece, and suddenly you have no, 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 no sauces anymore. And that's what happened in this system as well. They reduced, reduced, reduced the costs and left material out until they reached the final point and the building in Eindhoven collapsed. And the Polak building is just holding itself uh, up. up. <laughs> yeah, really. You call this affair a, a cover-up by the government. Can you explain why you do this? Cover-up, that's a very serious word, but I'm very serious about it. Yeah, because, for instance, uh, if the parking garage in Eindhoven was just holding because the sun was shining on the top floor, yeah, and then it would be become uh, used by the people who would come to the airport, and it was full with uh, cars and people in it, and then it would collapse because the load was too big. That would be a disaster. So I think it's, and that's a very heavy word, it's a crime that this can occur in the Netherlands, a Western civilized country with enough money to build good buildings. And I think that's a crime. You say there is no new norm for these kind of floors yet, but they are being checked regularly, so they say. Um, how can they say if it's safe if there isn't a norm to check it yet? Uh, there was some control, but we don't know how much. I, I never saw from the Polak building expertise reports uh, that we inspected this and this is in the floor and that is in the floor. That has been investigated, but I don't know that. Yeah. But after the, after the collapse of uh, parking garage in Eindhoven, they decided to check the building and said it was safe yeah, and it was back to safe. So I think they checked that, yeah. but I'm not sure. I really have doubts about it. And now they discovered these little cracks to certain uh, circumstances in the, in the in near environment and I think, but that's a theory, eh? we have to prove that, that uh, the, 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 the construction of new buildings very close by, especially the driving of the piles in the ground which creates all kinds of vibrations in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, the, the buildings to be next to it. Yeah, that must have caused some movement in this weak building, for I consider it still a weak building. Yeah. And then they say, oh, the Congress said, oh, I can't take it anymore, I crack. And that's a sign that something went wrong. If something cracks, something is wrong. And of course, you haven't been in the building, you can only see it from the outside, but what do you think? Should we be afraid that the building is gonna collapse? N not tomorrow. <laughs> not tomorrow. But, <laughs> but it could happen in, in, in the time. It's all a kind of uh, uh, yeah, uh, calculation of risk. Yeah? How much risk do you take? And for instance, the strength of concrete. It's not one number, it's a range. It could be the lower part, could be the higher part, could be the central part. And with statistics, we analyze that. Also for the loads in the building, we use statistics. In our calculations, what strength the material can take, how much deformation do we accept. We use statistics. So I cannot say it will collapse tomorrow, but it will, it's a wrong building. Let's be very clear about that. It has to be repaired. It has to be checked first and see what is wrong. Repair that and then you have a safe building. Can the Pollock building be repaired or should we just tear it down? No, certainly not. We teach today our students in Delft eh, that we must build circular. And to destroy a building and to have a lot of rubble and rubbish uh, which you have to dump somewhere, that's a crime. I think that's a crime for the future of our, our society. Therefore, it should be repaired. That will cost a lot of money. I don't know how much, but lots of money, but it's worthwhile. Well, thank you for reassuring us, Rob. Uh, we feel much safer if we will be allowed back into the building again. And I want to thank you all, of course, for watching. Um, but not before we appoint this. We're, of course, all happy to be on campus, right? Or do you feel like this student? You know about rolling down in the deep end. I have... I have depression.
If you are that person, then you simply have to come by our office in Tinbergen building so we can give you one of our maps of campus. This was EMTV. Thank you all for watching. We will be back in two weeks, perhaps from here, perhaps from Polak. Read EM and you will know.